Welcome to English Literature and Language. During this lockdown situation, it will be a great enjoyment for all of you to read short stories. And when short story is concerned, the name of Catherine Mansfield has to be mentioned for her exceptional and experimental lucid form of short stories. In today's video, I am going to give you a synopsis of her life and works. Uh, why one should understand Catherine Mansfield's life and her work, you will know in this video. The name is enough to make, it, make us fall in love with short stories. English short story of the modern period, where writers were experimenting with different traditions uh, and literary devices, is incomplete without Catherine Mansfield's short stories. And I also want to tell you that if you are not studying English literature, still you can read her masterpieces for your own pleasure. So let's start it. Let us concentrate on the very first thing, which is her real name. Yes, her real name was Kathleen Mansfield Buchan. She was born on October 14, 1888. Now, please note that the same year also witnesses the birth of a modern poet and critic, with whom perhaps we all are familiar with more or less. Yes, you are right. I am talking about none other than Mr. T.S. Eliot. Catherine was born in Wellington, New Zealand and she was christened as Kathleen Mansfield Beauchamp. Mr. Harold Beauchamp was her father and her mother's name was Mrs. Annie Beauchamp. Her father was a wealthy banker uh, and she was the third daughter of their middle class family. She completed her preliminary schooling in Wellington. Uh, her scrapbook and journals bear the evidence of her skill of short story writing at an early stage. In fact, she wrote her first short story, Anna Blake, 1898, when she was a student of Wellington Girls High School. The story was published with her name Kathleen Beauchamp at the age of nine. In 1903, Catherine and her two sisters, Chadi and Vera, were sent to London to complete their education at Queen's College. She pursued their violoncello lessons at London Academy of Music and used to edit the uh, ma college magazine. Now it was Mr. Walter Lippmann, the German professor under whose tutelage she got attracted to literature of the period. She was immensely affected by the works of Oscar Wilde, Walter Peter and Dawson. After the completion of their college education, the Beauchamp sisters came back to their native land. However, Catherine was much reluctant and unwilling to come back to New Zealand, leaving London city. She was actually much accustomed and comfortable with her urban life at London. And that is why she did not want to live in her own country. In fact, Catherine used to feel exasperated staying at her home and harbored in her heart the wish to return to London. Craving for liberation was always in her nature. Uh, she did not bow down to the restrictions of her family. In 1907, she was well determined that she will be an authoress, though nurturing of the desire to be a professional cellist was still in her heart. Her father tried many ways to divert her mind, but with no result. At last, her father succumbed to the desire of his daughter. In 1908, she was given permission to go to London with an annual allowance of 100 euros. She was married to George Bowden, but the marriage was not successful. As a result, they got their divorce. In 1910, she started writing and her writings were also published well. However, the editor John Middleton Murray rejected one of her stories to be published in the magazine Rhythm. She again sent her story The Woman at the Store, which he accepted and soon they were engaged in a relationship with the consequence of her marriage in 1918. But due to her other relationships with men and women, their marriage relationship was not much stable, but they did not divorce. You must be wondering why I am giving all these details. 
whoever will be studying Catherine Mansfield's short stories in academic realm, it is really important to know these details because her writings are essentially influenced by uh, the incidents of her life. These details will help you even understanding her writing, motive and also shaping your answer. A huge change took place with the death of her nearest one. Yes, her brother Leslie Heron Beauchamp was killed in a war on October 7, 1915. From then she became full grown. It impacted her life and writing immensely. You can say there was a resurrection of her inner self after the death of her brother. In fact, the death of her brother created the feelings inside her that she should write about her native country because there she spent her happiest childhood days with her brother. Her hatred for New Zealand turned into a passion to write about it. In this phase, she wrote the longest story, The Aloe, the first version of the prelude. She depicted her childhood experiences and the accounts of the family members. To recall her past memory, she used the sources of New Zealand and composed stories like The Prelude 1918 and At the Bay 1922. The modern short story writer Catherine Mansfield meticulously portrayed myriad events of her memory and her family members. She even presented her father in her central stories like A Birthday, The Prelude, At the Bay, The Fly, The Little Girl. Most of her stories are grouped in titles. She took continental tours in European regions and basically her experience of Germany was depicted well in her collection in a German pension published in 1911. It was her first story collection. After nine years, another collection appeared as Bliss and Other Stories, published in 1920. Perhaps her most matured and fabulous stories were published in her last collection, The Garden Party and Other Stories, in the year 1922, which you all should read at least once in your lifetime. Another collection of her stories, The Dove's Nest, was edited and published by John Middleton Murray in 1923. In the introduction, he clearly declared Mansfield's death on 9 January 1923. Here, her last story, The Fly, is included where she presented the complex and psychological nature of her father. Uh, I will analyze this short story in my upcoming video. Something Childish and Other Stories was her collection which was published posthumously by Murray in 1924. Uh, she also wrote few poems and besides that two novels Juliet 1906 and Mata 1913 were written by her. She was having her treatment for tuberculosis in France in the year 1922. Her illness could never subdue her spirit of writing. She was always craving to write more and she and her searching for spiritual cure was present in her. On 9 January 1923, she suffered a severe hemorrhage and died. She was buried in the Protestant cemetery in Fontainebleau on 12 January. She indeed was a prolific writer of her time. She experimented with her conception of self and her observation and narrative techniques reveal the influence of Anton Chekhov. So here I have tried to give you the brief sketch of her life work. I have not exaggerated anything but explained the most important phases of her life, which is very essential to know if you were to approach Catherine Mansfield in your academic course. Start reading the excellent pieces of her work and I am sure that you will like uh, all her writings. And when I will upload analysis of her stories, I hope there will be hardly any difficulty. In case you have read any of her stories, let me know in the comment box. If you like this video, subscribe the channel and share it to the needy ones. Thank you for watching.